Hey guys, Michael here with Primal Edge. I hope everybody's doing good out there today. In this video, I'm going to be making a new dice tray with the Proxon hot wire foam cutter that I just recently purchased. And also stick around. A little later on in the video, I've got a special guest who I want you guys to meet, so stick around. If you caught my last video, you saw that I recently purchased a Proxon hot wire foam cutter. And I've been having loads of fun using it. Recently, I received another order for a custom dice tray for tabletop RPGs and role-playing games like Dungeons and & Dragons. And up until recently, I've been using regular tools, knives, and whatnot to make the dice trays, but I decided to go a little bit different this route. Since I had the hot wire foam cutter, I decided that I was going to use this for most of the build. Ever since the first one, I've always had that next generation in mind, and while I know that I could have cut it all by hand, it would have been a lot of work and I kind of really just dreaded the thought of having to do all those intricate cuts. And I'll show you what I mean in a little bit here. With the foam cutter, I was able to cut all the pieces up front, get everything ready, and then work them by hand. Now I know that some of you are gonna be thinking to yourself, why are you building individual bricks when you could just use big foam blocks? I think that, in my opinion anyway, individual bricks tend to make it a little bit easier to get that ruined, older, well-established building that's starting to run down. If I were to cut these out and just simply draw in the designs for the brickwork in here, it's too flat, too perfect, and I would reserve that for something that was supposed to look more new and less aged. Now when putting the pieces together, there's a few ways to do it. I know a lot of guys use PVA glue, and there's really nothing wrong with it. But PVA takes a long time to dry when you're gluing foam together because, well, think about it. Foam is an insulator, and PVA glue requires air to dry. So if you're putting two pieces together, it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. Obviously, that depends on the size of pieces that you're putting together. If you're gluing together two pieces that are a foot square, yeah, it's going to take days, if not weeks, for that thing to eventually dry out. These smaller bricks probably wouldn't take so long. However, they still would take some time. And by the time I got to the next phase, which was sealing these things, well, I've sealed it. I've essentially made it close to airtight, which means whatever part wasn't dry inside is never gonna dry, because it's kinda like putting the cap on a glue bottle. Once it's sealed, it's never gonna dry. Now, if you look at these cornerstones, I guess you could call them, that I made, this is what I cut out using the Proxon. This, while I admit can be done by hand, is substantially easier using the Proxon. I like doing these types of projects, but what I like most about these projects is that everyone is unique, and they're never gonna be the same. I don't like that factory look, that you know assembly line type of look where really there's not much difference between his and hers. It's just maybe the paint job is a little different. I like using the cornerstones, I like using the different size bricks, sometimes I use thinner bricks, what have you. It's all about being unique. These are custom designs, after all. After all the sides were on, next step was to add the floor. Now at first I wasn't going to put a stone floor in there, but the client wanted to put his symbol in the middle, like kind of a portal type look. Um, and I thought that would just work better if I had a stone floor rather than just trying to print something out. I grossly underestimated the number of tiles I was going to need, so I went back to the Proxon table and cut out a bunch more. Once I had the design laid out in mind, I put everything together and got ready for painting. Now as far as painting is concerned, I can do a whole video on that by myself. First of all, I'm not necessarily the greatest painter in the world, and second of all, there's a lot more to it than just throwing some paint on there. You got dry brushing techniques, base coating, and whatnot. And if you guys are interested in seeing me go a little bit deeper into the painting aspect of things, let me know down in the comments below, and I'd be more than happy to do a video really just focusing on the painting. Essentially, getting the look I was going for required a few things. 
That includes basing it out in some Mod Podge, and actually there's a little bit of color in that Mod Podge to make the next phase easier. doing a base coat in a dark gray, and then progressively going to lighter shades of gray as well as lighter brush techniques. But before I give you the big reveal, I wanna take a quick second and hand the mic over to somebody who I think you're gonna to wanna to meet. In fact, if you're watching this video, chances are you might have already seen her. If not, you're in for a treat. Hi, if you've just finished watching Mike's video, chances are you enjoy doing some crafting for your tabletop RPG, even Dungeons and Dragons needs. If that is the case, I am V and I have the YouTube channel, The Crafting Muse, where basically it's a channel all about creating things for your games. So come on over, check things out, and I hope to see you there soon. Thanks very much, Mike, for the plug, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. I highly recommend you go over and check out her channel. She does some pretty phenomenal work. Back to the dice tray. Here it is, all finished and ready for the client. Um, I think he's going to like this. I think he like, he's going to like the way it turned out. I put his emblem in the center, as I said before, and tried to kind of blend in what he had in his design by doing a little paintwork around the edges. It's inset inside a nice thick coat of epoxy, clear epoxy, and it came out really good. I, I kind of like it a lot, actually. I really would like to do something like this again. I also added some flocking to the side to kind of give that, you know, old world moss, it's been around for a while kind of look. And ultimately, I think it came out really good. It's definitely strong and sturdy. It's going to last a while. Uh, it's lightweight, so it's not too heavy or cumbersome to carry around, obviously, because it's made out of foam. But at the end of the day, I really think the client is going to get a lot of use out of this. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Consider subscribing if you haven't already done so, and keep on the lookout. I'm shooting videos out Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you all enjoyed the show, and I'll see you soon.